السماوات والأرض جاعل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مسنى وثلاث ورباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء إن الله على كل شيء قدير ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها وما يمسك فلا مرسل له من بعده وهو العزيز الحكيم يا أيها الناس اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم هل من خالق غير الله يرزقكم من السماء والأرض لا إله إلا هو فأنا تؤفكون وإن يكذبوك فقد كذبت رسل من قبلك وإلى الله ترجع الأمور يا أيها الناس أن يا أيها الناس إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور إن الشيطان لكم عدو فاتخذوه عدوا إنما يدعو حزبه ليكونوا من أصحاب السعير الذين كفروا لهم عذاب شديد والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير أفمن زين له سوء عمله فرآه حسنا فإن الله يضل من يشاء ويهدي من يشاء فلا تذهب نفسك عليهم حسرات إن الله عليم بما يصنعون والله الذي أرسل الرياح فتثير سحابا فسقناه إلى بلد ميت فأحيينا به الأرض بعد موتها كذلك النشور من كان يريد العزة فلله العزة جميعا إليه يصعد الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفعه والذين يمكرون السيئات لهم عذاب شديد ومكر أولئك هو يبور والله خلقكم من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم جعلكم أزواجا وما تحمل من أنثى ولا تضع إلا بعلمه وما يعمر من معمر ولا ينقص من عمره إلا في كتاب إن ذلك على الله يسير 
وما يستوي البحران هذا عذب فرات سائغ شرابه وهذا ملح أجاج ومن كل تأكلون لحما طريا وتستخرجون حلية تلبسونها وتستخرجون حلية تلبسونها وترى الفلك فيه مواخر لتبتغوا من فضله ولعلكم تشكرون يولج الليل في النهار ويولج النهار في الليل وسق خر الشمس والقمر كل يجري كل يجري لأجل مسمى ذلك الله ربكم له الملك والذين تدعون من دونه ما يملكون من قطمير تدعوهم لا يسمعوا دعاءكم ولو سمعوا ما استجابوا لكم ويوم القيامة يكفرون بشرككم ولا ينبئك مثل خبير يا أيها الناس أن أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد إن يشأ يذهبكم ويأتي بخلق جديد وما ذلك على الله بعزيز ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وإن تدع مثقلة إلى حمدها لا يحمل منه شيء ولو كان ذا قربا إنما تنذر الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب وأقاموا الصلاة وَمَنْ تَزَكَّى فَإِنَّمَا يَتَزَكَّى لِنَفْسِهِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ وَلَا الظُّلُمَاتُ وَلَا النُّورِ وَلَا الظِّلُّ وَلَا الْحَرُورِ وما يستوي الأحياء ولا الأموات إن الله يسمع من يشاء وما أنت بمسمع من في القبور إن أنت إلا نذير إنا أرسلناك بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وإن من أمة إلا خلا فيها نذير وإن يكذبوك فقد كذب الذين من قبلهم جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات وبالزبر وبالكتاب المنير ثم أخذت الذين كفروا فكيف كان نكير صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله 
نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله وهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ويقول العز وجل في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الذي عنده علم من الكتاب انا اتيك به قبل ان يرتد اليك طرفك لما راه مستقر عنده قال هذا من فضل ربي لنبل واني اشكر ام اكفر ومن شكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن ربي غني كريم All praise due to Allah who seek his aid, who seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls and I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger whomever Allah guides cannot be misguided whomever he is guided aright can never be misguided Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in approximate meaning in the Quran answered the one who had knowledge from the book as for me i shall bring it to you before the twinkling of an eye and when he saw it truly before him he exclaimed this is something of my sustainer's bounty to test me as to whether i am grateful or ungrateful whoever he who is grateful to allah is but grateful for his own good and he who is ungrateful should know that verily my sustainer is self sufficient and most generous in giving my dear brothers and sisters in this set of ayat from surah an-naml surah 27 it's a part of the story of prophet suleiman when suleiman had asked his uh, court who could bring him the throne of the queen of sheba before she arrived with her armies and originally one of the powerful jinn said he could bring it to her before suleiman could stand from his throne and this individual who had knowledge from the book that's simply how allah describes it said i can bring it to you in the blink of an eye and he did so <coughs> and once suleiman sees this he recognizes in this instant of great power if you will that he has this moment where he has this court and he commands it and they do what he says and so by extension anything they can do is a power that belongs to him if you will as the king and he recognizes in this moment where this throne is basically teleported you know instantly there before him that it's a test that in this moment of success in this moment of of power of achievement of accomplishment that he's being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's the test? To see whether I am grateful or ungrateful. Grateful or ungrateful. Am ashkur? To be thankful or akfur. So kufr is the opposite here of gratitude. Because kufr means to cover up the truth. This is where when we talk about somebody being a kafir, the idea is that they know the truth they choose to cover it up they deny the truth so are you grateful for these blessings do you see all that allah has given you and say shukran alhamdulillah thank you allah or do you cover up that truth do you hide that truth try to take credit for it yourself try to imagine that yes i'm so wise i'm so powerful i'm so great look at what i was able to achieve and he goes on to say what as a lesson whoever is grateful is ultimately what but yes for nafsi it's it's his own benefit gratitude is something that is good for us it doesn't help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know sometimes we may think that when we tell people oh say thank you why because when someone says thank you to us we feel good you know it's nice we feel appreciated we feel valued and so when we're dealing with each other being grateful to somebody else is also a way of doing something for them they they benefit from it and conversely if we're ungrateful to somebody we feel bad if you do something nice for somebody you do something good for somebody and they're like ah whatever and they just take it and go and they don't say thanks and they're very ungrateful for what you did they just toss what you gave them aside like yeah it's terrible gift i i didn't like it even and they just they walk away they're ungrateful for what you did or for what you gave them 
you feel bad. You feel like, man, that's, you feel maybe some even hostility for them, et cetera. And that's the way it is between people. And we're told, be thankful to people. You know, it's, it's important that you say thank you to people and so forth and so on. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it does nothing for Allah either way. We're grateful to Allah because that gratitude is good for us. Our gratitude doesn't make Allah feel better. It doesn't benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. You'd be the most profusely grateful for all of your gifts and Allah doesn't benefit in anything. That doesn't help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. It does nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And neither does it harm him. Whoever is ungrateful, as he says, whoever is ungrateful, fairly my sustainer is self-sufficient and most generous in giving. Allah gives because he's generous. He doesn't give because we deserve it. Allah gives out of his karam, out of his generosity, out of his rahmah, out of his mercy for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of nothing from us. He doesn't need our gratitude. When we're grateful, when we say be grateful, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is commanding us to do this because it's good for us. It's beneficial for us to be grateful. And so it's important for us to really think about this principle of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we've been given, in particular and especially when we are at the height of blessings. Now, we should be that way all the time because sometimes people in their ingratitude don't even recognize that they may be at the height of blessings. Some may say, yeah, but boy, let me tell you, my life is so hard and difficult and miserable right now. You don't even realize still what height of blessing you're at, that you're alive that you're pain-free, that you're mobile, that you have food to eat, that you have a place to sleep, that you have clothes on your back. And then even if you have none of those things, you're in a society that provides shelters at least, that there's relative safety, we're not being bombed. Our lives aren't in imminent danger because of threats of violence or attack and so forth. And no matter who we are, what our situation, we still have an innumerable number of blessings. And so it's always in those moments that we have to recognize these tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we grateful or do we become like kafirs who are ungrateful and covering up the truth, the reality of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet ﷺ said that there are four qualities and whoever has been given them has truly been given the best of this world and the next. A grateful heart, a remembering tongue, an enduring body, and a faithful spouse. And think about it. Two of those things are really 100% in your control. A grateful heart. That's up to you. Any one of us at any moment can say, you know what? Wow. Ya Allah, thank you for everything you've given me. I'm so overwhelmed with all of these blessings. I didn't do anything to deserve it. I can, to that extent, control my grateful. I can choose to be grateful. Just like Suleiman said, it's a test. Do I choose to be grateful or do I choose to be ungrateful to cover up that truth of these blessings? And a remembering tongue. We can say dhikr. I can put post-it notes. I can set alarms. I can set reminders if I'm forgetful. But I can choose to be somebody who remembers Allah frequently. So those two are completely in my body. Enduring body, may Allah grant us all good health. Certainly we can go a long way in that in terms of eating well, resting well, exercising, you know, taking good care of these bodies. And so that's the best of this world and the next. And so we want to think about that, that shukr and dhikr, remembrance and, uh, and being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is halfway to the best of this world and the next. And so we want to really reflect upon this. And hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another surah, which of the blessings of your Lord will you deny? Because again, you can go on forever and ever and you will never run out of blessings. And the beauty is, and this is again out of Allah's karama and generosity, he says, and if you are grateful, I will give you increase. So subhanAllah, not only does Allah give us all of what he's given us, and it's more than any of us could ever imagine, uh, certainly more than we could ever even count and thank Allah for. 
you start listing your blessings one by one, you die of old age before you got anywhere near to completing that list of blessings. But then not only that, as you are being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll give you even more, which is even more to be grateful for. And so that should really put us in that state of humility and, and humbleness and should really cause us to think about this principle of gratitude to ask, where are we? And remember that shukr is not, it's not a one day thing. You know, we live in a country that makes a big deal out of you know, Thanksgiving. Well, yeah, for a day, but it's a country of days. We have Mother's Day, Father's Day. But our deen isn't about a day. It's not Islam day, it's not worship of light day. This is our life, deen is a way of life. So we're not thankful one day. We don't honor and celebrate our mothers one day. We don't honor and celebrate our fathers one day. Those are things we should constantly do, be in a constant state of remembrance and thankfulness and gratitude, honoring our parents and so on. Our deen is a deen of how we live and that should be all the time. And it should be truly something that we think about and live. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. So on the opposite end of that aspect of gratitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah wa yatandur nafsum ma qaddama li ladim wa attaqullah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun wa lana <clears throat> o you who believe, be conscious of Allah and let every soul look to what provision he has sent for the morrow. Indeed, be conscious of Allah, for Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. And be not like those who forget Allah and he made them forget their own souls. Such are the rebellious transgressors. Not equal are the companions of the fire and the companions of the garden. It is the companions of the garden that will achieve felicity and success. You see, this thing that takes us away from shukr is ghafla, heedlessness. And this is really a most dire situation. When we become truly unmindful and forgetful of all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to the extent that we end up forgetting our own souls. Meaning that we just live a YOLO life. You only live once. Living in this attitude of, I've got a bucket list. There's a certain number of things I just need to accomplish and get done. And, and I don't think about the consequences. It's as if when I die, that's it, the game's up. And so I need to have as much fun as I can right now. And that's the mentality of this society around us is constantly pushing. And we have to be mindful of the fact that there is life after death. Death is, is merely a doorway. And we're on the short side of it. Our life and compared to the hereafter is a blink of an eye. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Prophet Sallam said, it's like you're traveling through the desert and you pause under the shade of a tree for a moment just to rest and then you continue on. That's what this dunya is. It's a, the briefest of rest stops and we can't get all caught up in that. When we look back at our history here in America, when the Europeans came, when they were in need, they were happy to take advantage of the Native American generosity, helping them, giving them food and so forth. As soon as they had the moment of stability, they turned around and stabbed them in the back, undermined any trust by, they went back, they broke promises, they broke treaties constantly, committed genocide, right? The, the, the history of the European in America from its beginning is horrible. It's a horrible state of just complete ghafla, heedlessness living as if the world was theirs for the taking. When they're in need, yeah, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They ask for help. They're happy to accept it. 
when they're in a position of strength, they say, aha, we can take advantage and be just horrendous, truly horrendous. And we need to really think about how much things have changed since then. And by that, I mean, have they really changed? And we need to make sure that we don't adopt the worst of those qualities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us so much. Then when we're in a position of strength, as the vast majority of us are in particular here in this country, as I said, we have so much. We have wealth and clothing and food and shelter and security and safety. What is our state? Have we become people who have completely forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence we end up forgetting our own self. And we've forgotten that we have a day that's coming. How often do we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our eyesight? When was the last time that we thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we could stand and walk freely on our own? I was talking with a brother recently, parents are elderly and he was commenting on how he was grateful that he could still just take a shower by himself and use the restroom by himself. Because that's finally when that's taken away, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to go back to a state, if you think about it, where it's like every time you had to go to the bathroom, you would have to call someone and say, hey, please, can you take me to the bathroom? Can you wipe me? I need a shower. Can you come and wash me? Because I can't do those things for myself anymore. But when did we last say, Yeah, Allah, when did we even get up this morning and say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, I can stand and walk by myself. Thank you, Ya Allah, for allowing me to use the restroom and then wash up, take my ghusl all by myself. Thank you for letting me see. But how often do we take those for granted because Allah hasn't taken it from us? And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always protect us from ever being in a state where we have forgotten our own selves. And so we're reminded, take advantage of five before five other, your youth before your old age, your health before your illness, your wealth before your poverty, your free time before your busy time, and your life before your death. But we need to take advantage of those in the way of gratitude that we're grateful for all of those and they're expressed in how we live with those things. That we remember that everything that we have only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're amazing and awesome, but it's only because Allah gave it to us. It has nothing to do with us inherently. It's not because we did anything to deserve what Allah has given us of good and benefit. If Allah were to hold us to account, we would only have punishment because of our constant transgressions against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the, the generosity, the karama, the, the, the mercy, the, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he continues to give us despite our sins, despite our mistakes, despite our turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is for us to be mindful and to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, to look around, just to take some time and to really think about the innumerable blessings that we have, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them, to be grateful, to use those blessings in ways that are pleasing to him, to generously donate. Okay, we're not in the masjid right now, but it doesn't mean we don't remember the masjid and send in our donation online. We don't have fundraising events anymore, but it doesn't mean we don't remember our nonprofits and people that are doing good work and supporting them. It doesn't mean that we're not looking for those groups and organizations that are benefiting the people and say, okay, how can we help them? Because we want to be mindful of what Allah has given us and to always give, to always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to live that life of gratitude. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi